Okay, Effective Marketing for a New Political Party by me, Andrew Atkin. These are just my personal opinions, of course, but I feel very confident in them. So here we go. I'm just going to make a quick skit to show. Um, The new world for political marketing is, of course, computers and cell phones. The mainstream media is shrinking. So we really need to think in a essentially, I think, before anything, a cell phone centric reality. And what we want to do is present our position in an extremely straight, clear, right down the line way that people can truly understand. And that doesn't mean talking about your values and things like that, because, you know, lovely high sounding words mean whatever people want them to mean. It's it's worn out. You need to show people exactly where you're at and exactly what you want to do. And the way to do that is this way, I believe. State your policy positions, your ideal policy positions, in order of priority. Like, And these are just my personal opinions, of course. I'm really just showing how I think it should be structured. But I will. You know, it's my personal opinion in, in the sense of how I think the policy ideals should be, should be prioritized. First up, I would have 100 days referendum system presented like that. I think that's the most important thing right now because New Zealand democracy is degrading very badly. I mean, we've got the Green Party pushing policy ahead that 90% of us don't even want because Labour and New Zealand First have to make these concessions with them uh, for their support. Uh, That's not democracy. That's something weird. The 100-day system would destroy any extreme minority party's ability to railroad an entire country with a mandate that they don't want because it puts the public in the executive of course so you present it like that there you go 100 days referendum system that's our number one policy and right beside it you have a little box which has two links in it for brief so they can get it in brief text so they can learn more quickly and go straight to it no hunting no pissing around no searching and a video as well for people who don't like staring at screens and like to have, look out the window and have a cup of coffee. You know, people like me, basically. And then you have the detail option as well when they have it text and video. So it's really clear, really simple. They can go straight to what they want. So you don't have to worry about flooding them with too much information. They'll take it exactly the way they want to take it. And also presented with the policy position should be a very simple soundbite. So if they read nothing else, they can at least read that. And I've written here, the public must have the final say, which is what 100 Days Referendum is all about. Extremely successful system in Switzerland, and we should really be bringing it into New Zealand as well. We need, we should have this conversation. Um, yeah, so that's what I think we need before anything. Right. And there we go. I think that should be the number two policy. Housing free to build zones. Same, exactly the same system, same format, so they don't have to muck around, they can go straight to what they want. And I have my soundbite there, a house can cost $250,000 all up. Just in saying that, they know where you're at, what you want to do. And again, they can go straight to the details afterwards. And one law for all, and a soundbite that I've put with that one is, all people in need are important, not just Māori. Now who's going to disagree with that? No one. Of course, but this is this is it, isn't it? What people don't realise with when you don't have one law for all is you're effectively saying uh, preferential treatment for other people based on their ethnicity. It means that if you've got a white guy or an Indian guy or whatever in need, they get less than a Maori in need, and for no other reason than they're not Maori, uh, which is appalling policy. Now, it's very very important that we sort of come from that angle because the media, the mainstream media which is rapidly becoming uh, sidelined by the internet, but the mainstream media today is loves racism, okay? It sells. Racism sells as their unspoken policy. So even if we're not a racist policy party, and of course we're not, the media will try to make us look that way because it sells, and we have to fight against that. And by putting, by showing that we're not all about one law for all, with this uh, priority sequence, like going down one, two, three, uh, we're we're sort of demonstrating that they would be disingenuous, they would look disingenuous, the media would look disingenuous if they tried to make us look like a racist party, because we can effectively prove that they're not uh, representing us in any kind of fair way at all. Okay, the next one, 
to me, this should actually be number one, but I'm being politically realistic here. I would list it as number four child abuse issue, which is a very, yeah, it's a big, long, complicated one. But the soundbite I, I would have for that is we must back people to be parents, not just taxpayers. I mean, our education system is all about making taxpayers. Now, what about bringing up kids? <laughs> From an evolutionary perspective, it's the number one thing to do, isn't it? Right. And another policy here, education voucher system. That's where the money chases, follows the child directly, and children should be respected like customers, not inmates. And I'd like to see the voucher system also apply to homeschooling, so people can keep the money in their pocket for qualified, basically qualified, and uh, capable parents, so that they can choose to homeschool their kids if they want to. I think that would be huge as well. And on. But the key thing is that it's extremely clearly presented. They can go straight to what they want. They get the soundbite and they know exactly what your party is all about because you've created that sequence there, which shows your policy priorities going straight down, you know, one, two, three, four, five. And to stress, I think that's really important and a really good way to present ourselves. A straight down the line, straight up party. Okay, now probably nothing is more important. Uh than who your leader is for any given political party because the mass public interprets the party through the leader. What your leader is is what the party is. Um, maybe they shouldn't operate like that, but they do. I mean, look at Jacinda Ardern. She's pure image, yet when Labour made her leader, she cannibalised the Green vote dramatically. That demonstrating how important, important it is to have a good image. Yeah, right. And this is what I think are the prerequisites for a good leader. They must come off as an adult. They must come off as completely in control. You know, if you've got someone who acts like a jumpy little kid, I mean, that's an ouch. People will not see you as legitimate. Uh, must come off as clearly intelligent, self-explanatory, and never hateful and above petty politics. That is also vital. You know, Simon Bridges needs to learn a bit about that one. Ha ha. Um, and they should have a mature enthusiasm. You don't want someone who comes off like a psychologically dead bureaucrat. Plenty of uh, career politicians like that. That's not where we want to be. You can get away with it in a major party, I think, but not a new third party trying to create itself. Bonus virtues are, of course, it's good to be good looking, good to be funny, and it's good to induce public curiosity. And as I say here, otherwise the masses will not take your party seriously, even if they should. Right. Without an ideal leader, you will struggle, especially as a new third party. A leader defines and anchors your party in the public eye overwhelmingly, obviously. Now, the truth is we're not going to get an ideal leader. We'll, we will get the best person we can. But by understanding how important images we need to tell whatever leader we have, um, sorry, dude. But your image, having the ideal leader is so important that if someone better comes along, we will ask you when it's appropriate to stand down for that better person. Um, and we need to, uh, they need to uh, accept having a bit of ego bruising. But, you know, if you say this right up front, right from the beginning, then it doesn't have to be nasty and ugly. Because again, we need to basically swallow egos and get the best person for the job in that role. And that person, I'm not trying to suggest that that person is me. I don't think it is. I think I need another 10 years behind me before I can pull off an image like that. Okay. Now, the new world is the cell phone world. And we need to think cell phone centric. We need to obviously create a lot of attention so people even know that we exist. So we need to think in terms of provocation, entertainment, and as I said, cell phone friendly. I mean, that's all just common sense. We don't want to think so much as a mainstream media party, like trying to appease the mainstream media because they're dying, they're shrinking. Again, it's the cell phone world. And we need to create ways to grab people's attention and ideally be shared via media. Uh, being shared via the media is essential. I mean, if you've got people thinking you've done something hilarious or whatever and they want to share it with all their friends... I mean, what better advertising is that? If we, insofar as we can go viral, hell, we need to. But when it's about politics and political parties, it's a very sensitive game, of course. Because, I mean, it's easy to provoke, 
but it's also easy to destroy yourself in the process. In other words, while maintaining an electable image. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I've heard so... Again, it's, it's so easy to make a spectacle of yourself, but and get everybody knowing you exist, but in completely the wrong way, and having them laugh even harder with the idea that they would actually vote for you at the end of the day. Okay, that's all my key things that I wanted to say for political marketing, and we need to think aggressively in terms of marketing, making ideals realities. Thank you.